It's a well-known myth that when it comes to being a photographer or filmmaker, you have to spend a lot of money on your gear, especially lenses, to get good results. But this couldn't be further from the truth, as there are ways to be creative and shoot amazing photos and videos without remortgaging your house. And if you are using a mirrorless camera of any brand, from Fuji to Canon, Sony, Nikon or Lumix, for very little money you can adapt pretty much any vintage manual lens to your camera and simply have fun. Yes, some high-end classics from Carl Zeiss or Leica will still cost as much, if not more, than modern lenses. But I'm not talking about those, I am talking about lenses that were mass-produced for the masses. And this little beautiful Minolta 50mm f1.7 MD is exactly that. Before I tell you anything else, you need to know that you can buy an adapter like this for about £30 or $30 to attach this lens to your mirrorless camera with. And you need to look for MD, as this is MD mount, to whatever mount your camera is. Sony E, Nikon Z, Z, uh, L mount or whatever. The lens itself is very easy to find online on eBay or in charity antique thrift stores, as it was mass produced in the 1990s. So it is new vintage, if you like, and there is a lot of these around and that makes it very cheap. You can find one of these for, from anything, for anything from £10 or $10 to about £50 or dollars, making it one of the cheapest nifty 50s that you can buy. But should you? I shoot a lot with manual lenses, new and vintage like, like this one. And shooting with manual lenses gives always more satisfaction and that sense of achievement when you nail that focusing right. And this is no exception. The good thing is that using it on a mirrorless camera as, as opposed to film camera or even DSLR, you can zoom in on the screen or in the viewfinder, especially viewfinder, to quickly adjust that focus. I always program one of the buttons in the back of my camera cameras to have a zoom in function and I, always, and I also always use focus peaking. All this makes it not even much easier to shoot with this lens, but also you get much higher success rate at nailing that focus point right. This Minolta lens is not perfect, but that makes it more special, gives it that character. At wide open at f1.7, it is slightly soft and less contrasty, and there's a bit of vignetting and barrel distortion visible, but that's the part of it, part of the experience and integral part of the character this lens produces. All these issues can be very easily fixed in post to bring the images taken with it to your personal liking. As with all lenses, the sharpness and contrast and overall performance improves when closing the aperture down. But what's the point in doing that when this goes all the way down to f1.7? These go to 11. Minimum focusing distance of only 45 centimeters uh, lets you get closer to your subject and by doing so, make that subject to background separation more pronounced. f1.7 gives you really nice shallow depth of field and really nice vintage, like, well, vintage bokeh, making this lens a really good choice for not only creative photography, but also for filming with, giving you more of that elusive cinematic look. The focus ring is really nice and firm with 180 degree throw, making it a doddle to focus with when, when filming. The aperture ring is not declicked, but that's what variable ND filters are for, and with tiny 49mm filter thread, they're also cheap to buy. The lens certainly fits perfectly in the nifty 50 category, as it is small and light, weighing only 165 grams making it a great choice for everyday walkabout lens or for when traveling or to keep in your camera bag for when you might want to use it, just in case. Conclusion, they don't make them like this anymore. There are new lenses coming out coming out now from brands like Seven Artisans that for much more money deliver those vintage-like results, but no money can replace that pedigree or, or rather provenance that comes with a lens made few decades ago like this. This is this is one of the cheapest, if not the cheapest, 50mm wide aperture prime that you can buy. And I really think that you should if, if you see one. Far from perfect, but the price makes it a superb value for money for anyone who wants something different than your clinically perfect all singing and dancing modern lenses. And this is it from me. Like it if you like the video. Comment below and if you like to see more videos like this one, subscribe too. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Before I tell you anything else, you need to know that you can buy an adapter like, like this one. Before I tell you anything else, I need, I need to, before I tell you any, before I think, tell you anything else, before I tell you any, ah, all this makes it not much. Ah, <laughs> the lens certainly fits the lens. Ah,
Oh, shit. <laughs>